Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe how to test for the presence of starch, protein, lipids, reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. Over the last few videos, we've looked at a range of different biological molecules. Now we can test for a number of these molecules using simple chemical reactions. The test for starch, protein and lipids are relatively straightforward. The test for reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars is more complicated, so I'm going to look at those in the next video. Now we often carry out these tests to determine which chemicals are present in different foods. However, we can also use these tests for other purposes. For example, we can test plants for starch to see if they've carried out photosynthesis. And we can test urine for protein to diagnose kidney problems. We can also test urine for glucose to check for diabetes. In this video, we're going to assume that you're testing different foods. I should point out that all of the tests use potentially harmful chemicals, so safety goggles need to be worn and any spills cleaned up with plenty of water. OK, in the first stage, we have to grind our food with a small amount of distilled water in a mortar and pestle. Once we've turned the food into a paste, we then add more distilled water and we stir the mixture. Now the problem is that this mixture is going to be full of solid food particles and these could make the test results difficult to see. So in the next stage, we need to filter our mixture to remove these solid food particles. We carry out our tests on the filtrate, in other words the food solution which passes through the filter. Coming up, we look at the three chemical tests. OK, so we're going to start by testing for starch. First, we place 3 cm cubed of our food solution into a test tube. We then add 1 cm cubed of a solution containing iodine and potassium iodide. In the presence of starch, the iodine solution turns a blue-black colour. In the absence of starch, the iodine solution remains orange. OK, let's look at the test for proteins. Again, we place 3 cm cubed of our food solution into a test tube. We now add 3 cm cubed of dilute sodium hydroxide solution and mix. Next, we add 10 drops of dilute copper 2 sulfate solution and mix again. If protein's present, then the solution will turn purple or lilac. And if protein's absent, then the solution will remain blue. Now, there are a couple of points about this test that you need to remember. Firstly, sometimes the sodium hydroxide solution and the copper 2 sulfate solution are pre mixed. This is called biuret solution, and you may see this in your school. Secondly, this test actually detects peptide bonds. So you get a positive result with proteins, as these contain peptide bonds. However, a solution of amino acids would give a negative result, as this would not contain peptide bonds. OK, the final test is for lipids. Now there is one key point about the test for lipids. In this test, our food mixture must not be filtered, and that's because lipids can stick to filter paper. So in this case, we can leave the food mixture for a while to allow the particles to settle. OK, so first we add 3 cm cubed of our food solution to a test tube. We then add 3 cm cubed of ethanol and 3 cm cubed of water. We now shake the solution. If lipids are present, then a white cloudy emulsion will form. If the solution stays clear, then lipids are not present. Now one thing you need to bear in mind is that ethanol is highly flammable. So this experiment must not be carried out near any flames. In the next video, we look at how to test for reducing sugars and for non-reducing sugars. 